I'm here in upstate New York with the legendary Bobby Stewart, Mike Tyson's first boxing trainer. Bobby, what's your favorite way to keep in shape these days? Cut wood. I started when I was a kid. My father used to cut wood. And I used to help him. He would cut and I would just have loads of truck and stuff. And he, he would uh, burn in the fireplace in our house. And then later on, when I got on my own, I worked at Tryon School. A lot of the guys there would heat. Would cut wood and stuff. And I said, you know, I, I had a fireplace in our first house. And I started burning there. And I said, why can't I actually use this for heat? So I got a big stove down in the cellar, like a furnace, uh, and I would cut wood all the while and uh, get enough to heat the house. And I just continue to do it. And I'm still doing it since this day. Well, a, lot of, a lot of it, I have I've land. I have a very second land around here. Right now, I just have a couple acres down by the river that I cut on when I'm out of it. But I have a contract, a, a fellow that does it for a living, cutting wood. He's got a lot of big stuff, and he has nowhere to put it. So he drops it here, and I cut it up into small things like that, and then I split it. And he, and he ends up with a big pile like that. This is the, this is the stuff here I get it, I split it in my hand. Uh, you see up here, the stuff with like the long length, it's not, it's not down here is, but up there is not. I have little by little, like, I'll cut that all up and put it, and put it in the big piles like that. It looks like a lot of work. It is, but it's fun. So how long do you usually spend chopping wood at a time? I usually, when I split, I split for by hand for a half hour to an hour each night. And if I do more, I get it all done, and I'm dying and looking for something to do. So, so I usually do it last night in 40, 45 minutes. Pile it and then, like I say, put it in different places. And then, and I, I do that. I do it through, like, say, November. Then when it starts to get snow and getting cold, then I just that's enough. You gotta load the stove four or five times a day. Decide to keep it. Keep it. That's all new stuff. It'll be, you know, not till next year. And then that over there. That's going to be for, that's between this year and next year, and that's all I, that's all we need for this year. I sell something, I have a fellow that's in front of my I sell something. Wow, Bobby, so you have to lift and move this wood around a lot. Can you show us a bit what that's like? Well, this is up now. Yeah, some of the stuff, you, you stick like this, I just put it over, and it's split. And you get and you get to stuff like this. And some of the bigger than like just this year, a gas splitter. That, it's in the garage. And I, and I, that stuff over there, all knots. You can just hard as my hand. I'll split that with a gas splitter once I get, get enough to do it. But just, it's a good exercise. It's, I like doing it. We had discussed previously how Mike Tyson used to help you back at the trying school days. He would, he would, um, there was him and other guys. I would take them, not here, I, I was living in another place, but we, we'd go into the woods. Obviously, they couldn't use the, the saw or anything, but I'd cut the wood up, and they would pick it and throw it in the back of the truck for me. That was to get them out of the cottage for a while, and then I would pay them by buying something they couldn't get at the, at the, to the school, like uh, ice cream, certain kinds of ice cream or soda or something like that. Bobby, what was Mike Tyson's attitude like when you asked him to help you out and he used to do that for you? If I asked him, he succeeded at anything he put his mind to. That's what I'm saying. He would become a great fighter. He could have been anything he wanted to be. I mean, smart. He could have been a, uh, any kind of athlete he wanted to be. He, it's amazing. I didn't quite appreciate what was going on because I was every day I thought, well, the next day he's gonna, you know, something's gonna happen wrong. But he continued to work and work. And so Mike was enthusiastic, even if it came to anything moving Anything I asked him to do, he, if I say pick, pick up two, we pick up ten. He run and throw him back. He, he was very focused. Very focused. Real, real. Uh, he was amazing like that. I mean, there were other kids that were good too, but he was just phenomenal. He was very athletic at that time. Uh, not, not that much because I didn't know anything about it. He, you know, it's just, uh, although, you know, in, 
I remember, well, boxing obviously took up good, took up fast, but he played like baseball, softball there playing, and a, a fellow, uh, one of our, uh, Rich Angelotti would teach these guys how to play baseball. And I was 13, 14 years kids, some didn't even know how to play baseball yet. And, stuff like and he was one that was not very good. But then they, 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 uh, Rich Angelotti taught him. Next thing you know, he said home runs, work, put his mind to it and really worked at it. Did he like to be told that he was doing a good job too? Oh yeah. yeah like that, we all do. That motivated him though, right? Yep. Yep. Like challenge. He loved to be challenged. I say, you know, like you start doing sit ups or something like that. I say do I should do when he he would do it but on his own though. I'd say start out with fifty sit ups and then work up to like a hundred a day or something like that. He'd do two hundred right in a row or something. Same thing with push ups. You just tell him to do 10 to start off, we do 35 or something. Always beat what I told said to do. When you first met Mike Tyson, was he in physically good shape or not? When I first started working on him, he was in very good shape, no. Strong, real strong kid. He's only 13, 14 years old. But he, he uh, like I said, just he, when I said do this, do that, he just kept doing it and started toning up and stuff. Do you think he really wanted to please you too and get and get your you know? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. He he, was, he wanted you to be proud of him, right? Right. That meant a lot to him. Yep. Now, Bobby Stewart, you had a lot of boxing matches, amateur and pro, and you were a national Golden Gloves champion. Do you think that if you just train Mike yourself with all your knowledge and background? How far, in your opinion, do you think you could have taken Mike? Could you have possibly brought him to become the Mike Tyson that we know and the heavyweight champion of the world? Why not? The money, money, places to go. You know, if, if I didn't, couldn't, if I didn't know Cus, because Cus took the fighter right in. I mean, not all, but if the kids didn't have a place to go or needed a good place to go, Cus would take him in to live there. and. Uh, and help, you know, help Monty and Kate and Jacobs behind him with money and stuff. And But I had none of that. I mean, I took him to Albany, to my old trainer, Matt Bransky and stuff. And that was great, but there's no house to live in or nothing like that. And I, the, the thing I would have done if I, if I hadn't known Cuss was I was going to ask somebody that I knew from New York, you know, friends that I knew from, I fought with or something like that, and say, do you know anybody? Jim's down there that he can get involved in and he would have to go back to his That would not have been good for him. I I I don't know. He, with his work I think he, I don't know, but uh this it's was okay. much it better. It takes the right amount of ingredients to make it yeah. work. And cuss cuss was the the best when it comes to stuff like that. Now if you think if Mike went in with without your 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 first initial training, how long did that go on for? Didn't the training when, from when you first met Mike? About a year, a little less than a year. So you trained Mike for almost a year before you run the cuss. No, no, I brought him. I brought him. I probably worked with him for a couple of months. Like four, three, four. How many months? Two, three months. Okay. I, I don't remember exactly. Before I got him down the cuss, but I thought he was doing good enough. So you took this kid Mike, who didn't know anything about boxing, and you taught him in about ninety days. You prepared him to the point where he impressed cuss the model so much that he said, here's the next heavyweight champion. Well, he did it, I helped him. But I was I was lucky enough, that I, hung, I worked with a lot of Cuss's fighters, and I saw things that I knew caught Cuss's eye. So I was able to like, show what, him what, what are some of the things that, like that? Well, like just always keep your hands up, move after your last punch, swing out of the corner, different things. That would, and, and he was perfect when I showed him. Almost like he was down in casting, or training, stuff that I was showing him. And he just caught on so good, and then, like I said, I've always said that that first night he was just phenomenal. He just did everything. He couldn't have been better. So, Bobby, you got impressed with Mike so much that there was a spark that caused you to come up with a plan, and you knew that if you could mold Mike in the right way, that you couldn't impress Cuss, and that would give Mike his future. Now, do you remember the first time you had these thoughts, I must bring Mike to Custom Model? And what was the spark that caused such thinking? Well, I, I, like I say, I started him, I started him when, he, when I saw him, he's, it wasn't even the physical part, it was the mental, he, he paid attention, he tried, he was trying to better himself, I don't care if he failed, but he was just trying, stuff like that, so I said, 
I brought him to my trainer, Matt Baranski in Albany, and he worked out. Mike said, yeah, well, of course, nobody believed he was 14. I think he was 14, and nobody believed it. Matt did. I mean, it was the other one saw he's 18, 19 years old because of his size. But I said, no, he's not. And, he, and I said, just, I said to Matt, I said, just cuss. It's cuss to work with kids because it's been two or three years since I was down there. And uh, he says, he said, yeah. Says, so I went, home, I went home that night. I wasn't working that night. I went home and dropped him off at the cottage or at the train school. Then I come back down and I, I called Cuss. And I said, I got somebody that you might want to look at. He says, uh, he says yeah, if you think he's, think he's uh, got a shot, he says, uh, So down. Matt was very impressed with him, Matt Bransky. Yeah, but he, had, but he didn't have this, you know, he had a gym, so he had a gym he worked on, but he didn't have any access to like a house or anything like that. You knew that Mike had something special. Matt Baranski, he was impressed, but he didn't quite see it yet. Well, he and, and, and he, he sort of saw it, but he, he didn't, he, you know, he, he had, didn't have his tools to, like if Tyson wanted, you know, we would have to go back to New York City and stuff like that, which, you know, who knows what would happen down there. Well, Cus had a place for him to train and stay and stuff like that. Did he see the same things in Mike that you saw, or not as much? Yeah, I just talked him. I just took him for the one sp couple rounds of sparring. That was it. But he believed me because I told him, but none of the other people believed he was. But did Matt think that he was going to be champion? He didn't really think no. that. No, I mean, he did, we never get into it. It was there for half an hour. So, he, so, so Matt really didn't pay much attention. He just said, hey, "That's a good kid. He's all right." Yeah, right. But it was Cuss that saw it. Yeah. He saw what you saw. Yes. Or did he see more than what you saw? You think more because I mean I, I saw kids want you know try right and that was all I need to see because he's like we're willing to work it's, he's gonna make it he's gonna make it in some way shape or form but when Cus saw him the very like I said the very 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 first night after three rounds of boxing he said he was taking my gloves off and, he, and I said I said what do you think I'm hoping he gets saying he looks pretty good he, he I can bring him back another day. Cuss was taking my gloves off, and I said, well, what do you think? And he said, first things first, he said, nobody believes he's 14 around here. They, they think he's you know, 19, 20, or something like that. But he said, if you tell me that, he said, I'm telling you, I can get proof. He said, I don't know. If you tell me, I believe it. And then he says, uh, but if you say he is, he is. And then he said, what do I think? Barring outside distractions, like where he could get in, tr get in trouble again or something like that. That would be the heavyweight champion of the world. The youngest of all what, time. What did you feel inside when you heard that? I, you know, I'm a tough guy. I mean, I, I, but I was I was going to start crying. I said, oh my God, just, just the first time he saw him, even if he doesn't, at least he's trying and he's going to make a better, he, he goes and gets a job or does a, becomes a decent person and stuff like that. You didn't really foresee what would really happen with Mike though, right? I mean, when Cuss said that, you said, eh. Okay, he's special, he acknowledges it, but you probably had no idea what was going to happen, really. Oh, no, no way. No did, you, way. did you think in a million years that, did you ever have a thought that Mike would come to such a place in boxing? I didn't even want that, really. I, I, I never thought of that. I wanted to be happy and be, you know, become a decent person and, and family, whatever he had and stuff like that. I just wanted him to be happy, get a job, be a bus driver, be a laborer, whatever. So he's happy is the main thing. I didn't have any idea of a heavyweight champion in the world. You wanted the boxing discipline to guide Mike. Boxing, we have to take these kids and hold something over their head. Whether it be baseball, football, becoming a doctor, becoming a, a, a physician, becoming whatever. To hold something over their head like I did with him. You get in trouble, I'm not working with you tomorrow and stuff like that. And that, his, his thing, goal was fighting. I just had to be an ex-fighter, so he, he caught on to that. If someone was a baseball player or a, a soccer player or whatever, I think if he could put the effort forth that he did with the boxing, he would have succeeded at whatever he did. Amazing, amazing, amazing attitude. That would work, I think it was just unbelievable. And going from just like nothing to, to like an over, went from a third to a seventh grade in reading level in like three months. That's where you're supposed to be about. Everything the teachers would say, what is, what happened? This kid's not acting out, because I told him, I said, I don't care if you flunk every subject, but you try and you don't act out in school to screw, up, you know, screw other kids up. And the teacher, after maybe two weeks, three weeks, the, kids were, the teachers were calling and saying, um, what happened? He's 
fine. He's not dumb. He's, he's smart. Everything just came into place, fell into place. Now, Bobby, why was it so important for you to help Mike become happy? That's what I'm there for. For all the kids? Yeah. 90% of them don't care. They look for their next meal. That's all they care about. This kid wanted to better himself, and I'm going to do everything I can to help him.